Ah, CES, the yearly consumer electronics show held in Las Vegas where companies in the tech industry show off their latest and greatest tech products and their concepts for the future. Now since I'm a car audio fan, you know that the majority of what I am interested in is car audio and car technology. I wanted to make sure to show some of you guys some of the latest car audio tech because it seems some of the other tech website and blogs don't really focus on it. That said, I do plan on covering a little bit of the non-car audio tech later in the video. So let's get started with CES 2016. First and foremost, it became apparent very quickly that there's a big push in the car audio industry for DSP or digital signal processor units. Audio Control had a strong showing bringing both a new 6-channel DSP and 8-channel DSP to the market, along with a 4-channel DSP integrated amplifier. I'm glad to see a company that has been long known for their equalizers and crossovers unveiling a new piece of tech that appears to be user-friendly and loaded with features. If you're using a DSP, of course you know you also need an RTA. Audio Control also has a new solution for that with the new SA4100i. Also unveiling a new DSP was Phoenix Gold showing off their new DSP that can be completely controlled and tuned via an iPad Mini. This unit features 6 channels of input and 8 channels of output, and even more interestingly, connects to a phone as an input via Wi-Fi as opposed to Bluetooth. Audison also released an updated version of their Bit1 processor with the new Bit1 HD which features more channels and a higher bitrate for higher resolution audio. With all these new processors, it's clear that we'll have more options for control of our car audio system in the future. Speaking of control, we are now seeing head units that integrate more and more with other systems of the car. Kenwood released a new head unit which can interface with radar, and Alpine is pushing their OEM replacement head units that have a ton of capability for controlling lights, air suspension, and other systems on a vehicle. At CES, it was also interesting to see manufacturers branching out into solutions for audio in motorsports and other applications. Hands down, Rockford Fosgate was definitely on the forefront of this push. They now have complete direct fit systems that are readily installed within Polaris Razors along with many solutions for motorcycles. One of my favorite things though was their kayak that they built for the show. Although this kayak was built for more of the cool factor rather than to be a specific product for the future, it was awesome to see some amazing fab work and it was pretty cool how loud this thing could actually get. Speaking of fab work, CES always seems to bring out quite a few cars with some pretty incredible builds. Near the Mobile Solutions kiosk was the Audio Control Demo Fiat built by Andrew Evans of Industry Auto Designs. This build turned out awesome with the edge-lit plexiglass and layer style fabrication. Clean, yet functional with an easily removable cover plate to adjust and control the DQ61 equalizer. Over at the Kenwood booth was this build that caught my eye by Divine One Customs. Again, another great use of lighting and clean lines. Kicker showed off their Q-Class line with this cool trunk build featuring classy fab work and the rather surprising single 8-inch L7 subwoofer. For as small as this enclosure was, the output was actually pretty impressive. Over at the ARC Audio booth, I got to check out industry veteran Dave Fishman Rivera's custom build. This build featured a custom steering wheel, custom doors, custom center console, and a very cool motorized amp rack. The level of precision and design behind the functionality of this motorization was really neat to see. The build that really seemed to catch a ton of attention was the Pioneer Scion built by Romel Medina aka Audio Fabricator along with 5-axis designs. This build featured three Pioneer 12s in an incredible custom enclosure and some awesome LED lighting techniques. In fact, Romel and the team at 5-Axis custom built the front grille with integrated LED lighting, a very cool implementation of LED technology. As far as car technology trends go, this year's CES brought several OEM manufacturers unveiling their concepts for in-dash displays and tech. This tech is very cool, but I think the car audio industry really needs to start thinking ahead more and more on how we can interface with this tech as replacing in-dash units will soon be a thing of the past. The other big trend for cars was self-driving technology. This is a tech that I really hope does progress because I feel it could put more of an emphasis on the enjoyment of riding in a vehicle, which could result in more people having an interest in high quality car audio. I also noticed that more companies are using electroluminescent panels for lighting in vehicles. This may also be something cool to see integrated into custom builds. So we've covered car audio and car technology, but what were some of the other notable trends for the rest of the tech world? First and foremost, virtual reality. 
Samsung was in force demoing their Samsung Gear headset and Sony was showing their new virtual reality gaming technology. Which was probably more fun to watch than to play. I honestly could not stop laughing. But what fun is VR if you can't make your own content? 360 Fly introduced their new 360 degree camera and GoPro showed off a demo of their 360 degree GoPro rig. There were also TVs, a lot of TVs. And part of me now has no interest in 4K since it'll be useless once 8K has arrived. Samsung really caught my eye with the cool concept for a modular display, along with their new fridge that takes pictures of the inside and syncs to an app so you can remind yourself of what you have back home. Philips released a 2.5D printer which allows for the printing of textures. I feel that this might be something that we could use for custom fabrication in the future. Oh, and by the way, there were no less than exactly 1 million hoverboards and drones. I had a great time at CES. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought was cool. Thank you to everyone that came out to the Mobile Solutions booth or stopped me to say hello. I always love meeting you guys. It was also awesome to see Steve Mead and Doug Bernards of Soundman. They both made some videos about CES and you guys could check those out over here. Also, as you can see, I now have Car Audio Fabrication shirts. So if you guys would like to put in an order, you can click the link down below. I'd really appreciate your support. A special thanks goes out to Emmanuel, EJ, Rory, Eddie, Truman, and Jerry, along with all the other Patreon supporters. Thank you guys for your support on Patreon and helping make it possible possible for me to travel to CES. More how-to videos are coming soon and as always, thank you for watching.